Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we are jamming some Soul Sisters once again. I played this on the channel a little while ago, I'll put the link to that video in the description, but we played that a while ago and it felt much better than expected, so I wanted to try and clean it up a little bit and see if we can make it a bit better. So the point of this deck is to gain life. So we have Guide of Souls, Soul Warden and Souls Attendant, so these will gain us life whenever a creature comes into play. And then what we're doing with that is triggering our Ocelot Pride, so we can make lots of cats, and we've seen how this goes and Snow was out of control with Guide of Souls. We can kind of do the same thing with Soul Wardens a bit as well. Then we have the Voice of the Blessed. This will grow and become an enormous creature very easily and very cheaply, and that's just a nice threat we can have. And we have this card from Bloomborough called Essence Channeler, which is a new one which is kind of similar. It's a 2-1. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and when it dies, you put its counters on target creatures you control. And as long as you've lost life this turn, it gets Flying and Vigilance. So we've got a few fetch lands in here to help lose some life, which can also go and fetch us this shadowy backstreet. We've also got these lands that pay three life to come in untapped. So we've got the full set of Witch Enchanters and we've got the Razorgrass Ambush as a little bit of removal, but most of the time it's going to be a land anyway. So we have those things that can turn on the Flying and Vigilance for this. We've encased that in a little shell with a bunch of removal here. So we've got our Solitudes, we've got our Plows, and we've got Skycrow Apparition. So we're going to be able to remove a lot of stuff. We've got a couple of Cavernous Souls to help make sure that we can resolve everything. And on the way, a little bit of a Ganja action there too. Basically, our deck should be very good at the fairer matchups, right? We're going to be doing a whole bunch of, like, jamming the ball with creatures, gaining life, being able to win in combat with some of our big things. That's what we found last time. We're killing creatures and stuff like that. Where we come a little bit unstuck is going to be the combo matchups, which takes us to the sideboard. Four Deafening Silence and three Stony Silence. We are really trying to silence our opponents in the board because it's a bit difficult for us. We've got one Rest in Peace and some Purify the Graves for the Graveyard matchups. Then we have a little bit more removal in Path to Exile and then some targeted removal in the Devout Lightcaster, which is a two for one when we get it off. And yeah, maybe this isn't exactly what we should be playing and Celestial Purge might be a bit wider being able to hit the red spells as well. But this will be able to exile an Archon of Cruelty or an Attracts or a uh, Psychic Frog, all that sort of thing. So not bad. And yeah, that's the deck. I'm hoping it's going to go better than last time. I've got another build of this I want to try down the stretch, but let's see how this one fares and then we can make some decisions there. If you would like to see my videos early on the channel, you can always pay £1 a month to get access to my videos early by becoming a YouTube member, which is quite a cheap rate and it would support the channel and I appreciate everyone who does that. But if you don't want to do that, just like and subscribe, sit back and watch some sweet Soul Sisters action. All right, we're cooking with this. We got Guide of Souls into the Essence Channeler. So we'll have a 3-2 on turn two. I'll take it. Basic Planes, Guide of Souls. We've got some removal as well that we can cling to here. We want to see a creature matchup where cards like Source to Plowshares and Solitude are very good because that's what White is excellent at doing right now. Definitely Colosseum. Okay, our opponent is not playing fairly. However, we have a Solitude, so we can erase their bridges if we play our hand right here. A careful study. You cracking at some Lion's Eye Diamonds? You sure are. How deep we going? Do they have a Cabal Therapy? Not yet. Okay, so you can have this one Nark Amoeba. They don't have anything to do with the rest of this mana, which is curious. They can crack. They should be cracking this for blue to flash back this otherworldly gate. I think that is the correct play here. Using that red mana floating, maybe you hit your Faith is Looting. Okay, so we don't actually need to do our Solitude stuff just yet, do we? Let's crack this. Let's go and get ourselves a Basic Planes. Let's play Essence Channeler. Some energy. Grow our little friend. Do I want to attack here? They can just get a 2-2. Two -two. I don't care about them having a 2-2 two -two creature here. Um, we don't have enough energy to grow our guy just yet. We can make decisions about whether or not we want Vigilance or some source to Plowshares action. All right. So what we want to ideally do is nail this Poxwalkers with a uh, Solitude here. So this comes back. Then they are going to cast this Oddly Gaze. And then they have the Cephalid Colosseum. Which is why they didn't crack this last turn. Because they just wanted to funnel the mana into the Colosseum. Which makes sense. And it's probably a better play actually. Uh, okay. So let this go. Another Pox Walkers is a little bit annoying. Right, so we can let our opponent do this whole song and dance. How many bridges do they have? One bridge. Two bridge. Just two bridges. Is that right? Just two bridges. I'd rather have snagged three. But I don't think we can say no to the situation we're in right now, can we? So they can Cabal Therapy, that gets back the other Poxwalkers they have. And then once the Poxwalkers is out, 
they'll have enough things to dread return and they can dread return like ox of agonis and draw the rest of their library that's pretty good all right let's just get this in now i think get rid of the pox walkers they're not playing the site the site i think it's called the the guy that draws you cards if you don't spend your mana on your guys because that can just mill out the whole deck they're on a more traditional build here but they can't just make a bunch of zombies that easily here goodbye bridges from below all right essence channeler now a 4-3 so they can just put this ox of agonis into play try and dredge their way through the other bridge from belows all right so get the pox walkers back our dead return gets back the ox and we might be able to beat what our opponent does here oh they do have a satoru that's the one i was talking about okay and a tassa's oracle and an alchemy there so they've got no cards left in their library they've got a second dread return here they do have a second dreaded turn, so they can fire this in to get the Tassa's Oracle back, and that is the game. Yep, that'll do. Like I said, combo is going to be a bit of a tricky one for us. We had the potential there, just didn't quite come to fruition. So clearly, I would like to stick these pieces of Graveyard Hate into our deck. Uh, the Devout Lightcaster is reasonable here. The Path is also reasonable. Deafening Silence can sometimes be pretty good. If they're on the combo build, that's kind of a nice way to look at things. But I think maybe being able to double fire a purify the grave is quite handy there because they don't have to cast that many spells so what doesn't look good here so the soul guy the the soul wardens and the souls attendant are great here because they actually can jam up our opponent's plans quite a bit i think we get rid of some sky clays because they're a bit slower and that gives us four more slots what are we going to do with those four slots we're definitely keeping the solitudes want to keep our plows as well definitely keeping all of our guide of souls type stuff is it Guide of Souls itself? We, like, the Soul Wardens are better here, because every time our opponent makes a zombie, it gains us a life. And that's quite a lot. How many lands do we realistically need in this matchup? Yeah, we can cut a, a, an enchanter here, I think. That's 20, 23 lands here. That's probably fine. So if we want... Is this Devout Lightcaster better than a Plow? Probably not. And that leaves us just trying to find one more cut. Maybe it is just one Guide of Souls. I also like Pride helps us go super wide. Or we could trim on like one of the, uh, what abilities this this gets? Vigilance, yeah. Okay, so we'll get rid of one of the essence channelers here. I'll keep this one. I think we are on, we have to play the shadowy backstreet this turn and hope that our opponent has a setup turn. It's not that often that the dredge deck just pops off immediately. Um, do I want a plow here? That'll help us clean up whatever's left. I think that's fine. And next turn we play the rest in peace. Now, if this wasn't a shadowy backstreet and was just a regular land, then we would have just held up the Purify the Grave for turn one. Just a Faith is Looting without any um, Lines Eye Diamond stuff. That's very good for us. Is our opponent playing Counter Magic here? In a Lines Eye Diamond build, it's very unlikely they are. Let's go for the rest in peace. All right, we're in. The old big Haymaker. I used to play Dredge back in the day. And when this card came out, the old rest in peace. That was brutal. So if we draw a land, we can go Soul Warden, Voice of the Blessed, and really start cooking. Our opponent probably has some amount of, like, um, Chain of Vapor, Echoing Tree style cards in their deck as well. Okay, we did not draw the thing we wanted, so instead we're just going to play a Soul Warden out and hold up this Purify the Grave in case we lose our Rest in Peace. If, they, if we lose our Rest in Peace, it will be a bounce for them to then do a big turn. Are we ready for the stage of playing really poor creatures and hoping they get there? Maybe we are. I will enjoy my life gain. Do I want to plow a Nark Amoeba? Is that worth it to me? I don't believe it is. Land would be nice. No. We did board out some lands. So it's not inconceivable that we're drawing lands here. All right, get this voice in. Now, every time they make a creature, our guy is going to get enormous. I'm not going to throw our Soul Warden into their 1-1. One, one. They're all mighty 1-1. One, one. Are we going to see a Surveil land here? No, just an island. Are we going to see a Chain of Vapor? No. Okay. They're just taking cards out of their deck, so they're more likely to draw the thing they need to draw to unlock this game. Scalding Tarn. Yeah, uh, cracking it. We're going to see some kind of mediocre creature, like a Stingwind Imp. A Poxwalk. That is what we've been saving the plow for. All right, so now we get to grow our creature again. Going to be tough for you here, opponent. Why are they attacking with a Nark Amoeba? Because it has flying, I guess. That's fine. And they're not blocking with it. Sure. You gotta ask the question sometimes. Land, not a land. So play the Souls Attendant. Bam. Get them triggers. 
So we could solitude this away to make sure this has even more counters if we really want to. Let's go rid of those pox walkers. Takes that out of the equation. Let's us bash for six. Okay, opponent. The land. Cracking for a strand. Oh, sorry, cracking their strand. Blue, 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 blue. Many blue. Is this going to be a breakthrough where X is three or whatever? That has to be what it is. Breakthrough, X is three. So they draw four cards and they get to keep three cards in total. All right, let's got a bunch of stuff. This is our opponent's exile zone that we've got popped out here just so we can see what they've been going through. I would like to draw a land, but not draw a land. We do get to hold up our Purify the Grave now because we can just play this Ocelot Pride. Triggers, let's have some. So now we've got a big flying Vigilance monster. If our opponent manages to break out of this, we've got the Purify the Grave and the Solitude. And we're about to start gaining some more guys and some more triggers and it's all going to snowball out of control here. So we're going to see a Chain of Vapor on the Rest in Peace here. Into the Floodmore. So we get a creature here, which gives us some more triggers. So our opponent's going to have to try and fully combo through this one. So now we're not caring about the Exile Zone, we're caring about the Graveyard. So we're going to pop the Graveyard out instead. We have Solitude to get rid of Bridges. We have a Purify the Grave to get rid of any problem bits and pieces. Our opponent's got three cards to work with, which is not a lot. A Breakthrough where X is one. Sure. So they're digging for, like... Lion's Eye Diamond, putting a, something useful in the bin. All right. No, they've got this otherworldly gaze they can fire off. That's not going to be the most useful thing. A careful study. They do have a dredger in there. Is this where we take a fight? And we just say no to this one dredger they have. They just have to draw two cards and discard them. I think that is the case here. Now they can pop this otherworldly gaze and maybe hit a dredger. Nope, they're not doing... Oh, okay, they might do that now still. They still have priority before this careful study resolves. They should pop the other early gaze here because they're looking pretty cold on the backswing. Yep, so there it is. So they have to find a dredger in the top three cards. Found a troll. Maybe we've still got a game here. Their bridges won't work, though, because of our solitude. Right, the first dredge, the second dredge. There's two Narc Amoebas. They can dread return something. Sure, I'll get some more life. Make some massive creatures. Like our opponent's not winning this game through combat. They have to win through their combo. And I don't know if what they have in front of them allows them to do that. They don't have any mana left. They can put another creature into play. But we can just kill their Narcomeva and smash through with a gargantuan yacht. Alright, our opponent's scooping it up. Okay, so now we have to do a similar thing on the draw. On the draw, are we more interested in Deafening Silence? Possibly. If we were to do such a thing, what would we be losing, though? Like, the Deafening Silence is likely to help versus their combo, which is what we're more scared of. So maybe we get rid of Part of Exile and get Deafening Silence in here. Maybe we trim an Ocelot Pride to get another one in. Maybe one more Channeler. Just have the three Silences in. I don't really want to be drawing many, many of them. But it's just another thing that we need to draw before our opponent's going bananas over there. Do I think a single Purify the Grave is going to be enough here? We'll see if our opponent mulligans. Like, we only have one Rest in Peace, so we may as well just keep... Uh, keep it a seven. That doesn't bode well for us, does it? All right. Cabal Therapy. Are they going to name Rest in Peace, or are they going to name Purify the Grave? If they name Purify the Grave, we still have a copy of Purify the Grave. Which is why I like the card. You can't duress it away. They name Rest in Peace. Okay, so we're going for... Is it Planes? hold up purify the grave or is it windswept teeth hold up purify the grave or the surveil land i think it's i think it's the heath now we've drawn a second fetch land otherworldly gaze in the upkeep we put in one dredger we can purify it and slow their roll no other no dredger so we don't need to do that but they kept whatever card though they kept one of the cards on top right or two of the cards on top even okay so now we can get ourselves surveil land and inch ourselves slightly closer towards a rest in peace, perhaps. Caracas, that is not all we require here. We can bounce the Saito. The Saito just coming in usually does enough damage on its own. Okay, so we can hold up, double purify the grave here. We can purify the grave, their otherworldly gaze here, and stop them being able to activate a second time. Or we could try and hit the things that come out of it. That's an interesting debate. Like, they have... The potential to pay the mana into the worldly gaze and miss. 
And we just hold up the double purify. Next turn, we can drop the Ocelot Pride and start doing the smallest of inroads into attacking our opponent. We got another one. Sure. This is why I think it's better to hit the guys. Because, one, they have to find the things to put in the graveyard in the first place. And two, they just have more other lovely gazes sometimes as well. A Nark Amoeba. I don't think we care about this one Nark Amoeba yet. I'll get rid of this troll though. So they can Cabal Therapy us here, but it's not going to do much good. Okay, they didn't otherworldly gaze in their upkeep, which is a surprise to me. But maybe they've got something better to do, which is a terrifying prospect for us. Opponent went to tap and do something and then decided against it. They might be just be waiting until second main phase. Seeing if they can get any action out of us against their Nark Amoeba. Cabal Therapy targeting us. Sure. Can name Ocelot Pride. Can name Witch Enchanter. I named Ocelot Prize, so we don't have a creature to play now. But our deck is full of one drops. And that does take a Narcomeva off the board, which is not the worst. A rest in peace, you say. I will certainly take that one to the bank. Let's go. I probably got four cards in hand. They're doing, doing another worldly gaze now, so they can try and set up something that might be able to answer this rest in peace. But this will wipe the slate clean for a little bit and give them some pause. If they play out something like a Lion's Eye Diamond, we might be able to snag it with a Witch Enchanter. we got to rest in peace. We lose our Purify the Grave that was in our graveyard, but that does mean we have the rest in peace in play, which is obviously the bigger, scarier piece of graveyard hate. Can I have some kind of creature, or are we just going to be playing out... I think we're just going to be playing out a Witch Enchanter as a 4-mana 2-2, because we need to win the game somehow. We've also found another piece of graveyard hate. Witch in China only hits things opponents control, so you don't have to blow up your own rest in peace. We get an into the flood mod. We are. Right, so that gives our opponent a turn before the rest in peace comes down. So going to attempt to win the game this turn. Is that doable on five cards? Potentially. It has to be a pretty good section of five cards, and it would also beg the question why they didn't do that before. So I don't think they're going to win the game this turn. Lands our diamond. All right, maybe. And giving it a good go. Oh, breakthrough. That's pretty savage. Yeah, if we don't play the Witch Enchanter here, maybe we're in a better spot. We need to get the game won because we can't just let our opponent draw cards forever. Okay, so they've got an Ox of Agonis and a Faith is Luna they can both use here. There is two Grave Trolls in there. Plus a uh, Stinky Imp. So that's what? About 20-ish cards. 17 cards, something like that. They can dredge here. The Ox draws three. So that gives them... A good chance at exiling enough things or, or milling over enough things to go. They have one dread return still, but they can't dread return the Saito because we've already taken one of their dread returns. So they have to mill enough to then dread return the Narcom the the Thassa's Oracle. But they have enough cards. They have enough blue pips now because they've got the Narcomu. So if they sacrifice the Ox and the two Pox Walkers, then they can win the game here. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have Purify the Grave and we should have you know, Graph Digger's Cage. That's probably just a better piece of Graveyard Hate there because we could just play that and have two pieces up and then our opponent's not doing anything. All right, so this is just a free play for our opponent because the Pox always come back anyway. They name the rest in peace, but they can just win the game now and they, now they know it's the coast is clear. Doing another Cabal Therapy here. No bridge from Blaze. Goodbye, Source to Plowshares. Sure. Do they not see the line? They do see the line. They just wanted to take out our plow for some reason. Sure. Yeah, that was tough. Uh, like I said, we're going to struggle a bit against, against combo. But if you want to beat Dredge, you can put your cards in your deck, in your sideboard, and you will beat Dredge every time. Uh, so that would be, instead of having things like Purify, we'd have things like the Graph Digger's Cage, which I think we probably should have instead. And that would help here. Uh, yeah, don't mind losing against that sort of thing. It's quite a niche deck. And like I said, if you want to beat this deck, you can. And you can adjust accordingly. Let's go to round two. All right, our opening hand, uh, it's a bit of a strange one. Oh, we're playing against uh, Bosch and Roll. So we have an interactive hand. We do need to find a payoff here. A Wasteland. All right, we're going to be okay against Wasteland. Ether Vial. Okay, I'm curious what this is. Obviously, uh, they play all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Let's crack this. If they're playing creatures, then we want to get our Soul Warden in there. No Mem Knights from our opponent there. I appreciate they're always tapping the Ether Vial, and it really helps to sell it when you do have something. All right, we don't care about counter spells. It's fine. We might get an insight into our opponent's Oh, slivers. All right, a creature matchup. We should be okay against creature matchups. 
Muscle or sliver? Sure. Let's get some more soul sitters going. And we can pass over there. It should be a good matchup for us, just given the high concentration of removal we have. But there are slivers that give you protection from removal spells. But hopefully the life gain we have will get us there. We do need to find one of our payoff creatures, though. Blue and black. Hibernation sliver. Pay two life. Return this permanent to its owner's hand. All right, let's go for a plow on the muscle sliver here. We got the hibernation sliver, where it was called. Not the, not the hibernation sliver, the crystalline sliver, the shroud one. Sure. Yeah, we played a little bit into that one. It's going to take a lot for our opponent to get through here. We're not taking huge amounts of damage. A Skyclave Apparition. Pay some life. We'll get ourselves a Skyclave going. We'll take out the Aether Vial here. Now they have some reasonably sized creatures here. Another Muscle Sliver. Okay. Gotta add up. We do need to find our, like, blessed flying dude. And that'll just end this game pretty quickly, I think. As it stands, we're taking a chunk here. We can put everything underneath the Crystalline Sliver, but I don't really want to do that. I think we're just going to take a big hit here. We played into the Crystalline Sliver a bit too too much there. Blue and Black, so there could be another Hibernation Sliver shot. Sure. So it's going to be very hard for us to clear, clear out any of their things here. A planes. Uh, I think I'm okay to jam in a Skyclave here. No targets, because they all have Shroud. But we do get to gain a bit more life, and now we can put two creatures in front of this Crystalline Sliver, and then they can bounce it. This is another muscle sliver. It is. Many muscles. A very muscular selection of slivers. Yeah, they're not finding the payoff creature here. It's not helped us out a great deal. So now they get attacked with a whole bunch of things. We block here and here. If they want to bounce this sliver, then... Okay, they're just probably going to take the damage here, right? All right? They are returning to their hands. That shrinks their board so we take less damage this turn. They can then just redeploy it with this sliver hive, though. It's tough out there. Let's get some soul attendant triggers. Source to plowshare is not the most useful thing. What does paying through life get us here? Not the most, as it turns out. So this is the most telegraphed solitude in human history. Why else would we be paying all that life? Yeah, we just didn't find our payoffs here and we're going to be in trouble because of it, I think. We also could have played around that crystalline sliver and killed the muscle sliver with a solitude in response. All right, here comes our solitude. I don't think we'll target anything here. We could target one of our own things. And gain two life, but I think having the blocker is just more beneficial here. I think my opponent is going to turn a lot of their creatures sideways this turn. There they go. So, we're effectively on eight. Well, but we're not because they're going to bounce this. So, we're effect we're, so we are on five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So the only one we can let through is a muscle sliver, which isn't great for us. Uh, so if we block here, 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 and one at the end here... That's not going to go great for us, is it? We're going to take four, and then we're just going to die. Yeah, I'll take that one. Yeah, we just didn't find our payoff there, and we did let them get the hibernation, not the hibernation, the crystalline sliver, and we didn't necessarily need to do that. So we will take a single removal spell. I think that's all we really need. I think our deck is pretty great, though, for this matchup. Obviously, you can go wrong, as we saw, but I'm pretty happy with what we've got. What would I like to swap for our path? Is it... A Skyclave? I don't think so. Might be one of our Witch Enchanters. Try something along those lines. But yeah, we need to find a payoff. We need our Guide of Souls. We need an Essence Channeler. We need a Voice of the Blessed. And we just didn't have it. Maybe we're supposed to mulligan more aggressively for those. I think if our opponent is showing us that they've got access to lots of blue slivers, even though like the blue slivers are the good ones generally, I think that probably means we can expect potential Force of Wills. Whether or not they actually want them for something like this, I don't know. I don't think there's any merit in bringing in something like a Stony Science to shut down their Aether Vials and we can just deal with them with the Skyclaves or the Witches. The Zavalt Lightcaster might be good, but this isn't really for their slivers here. Like they've, The only sliver that is going to reliably hit is one that is going to get bounced, so it won't reliably hit it. Because that's the only black sliver we've seen. I don't expect them to have many black slivers in their deck. Um, okay. Another land and our hand goes bananas. Let's get the Guide of Souls in, because this is a payoff card as well. We don't gain life for our opponent's creatures with the Guide of Souls. That is the downside. But it does generate energy, which can do some pretty banana things for us. An Aether Vial, sure. I'd love to draw a land. We did draw a land. It wasn't necessarily the one we wanted. But we'll take it. Like if this trades two for one into a force, that's not the end of the world for us. 
I don't believe they're going to put in a zero drop, so we can get our little one point of damage in here. And the next time we can really pop off. I'm thinking about hitting the Witch Blessed Meadow, because obviously you have the, the Ether Vial that's going to be churning away and doing work for mana wise. But if we can just drop like triple Soul Wardens next turn, then you're just going to have the biggest boy in town. Muscle E Sliver, sure. Swords to Plowshares. I would like a Soul Warden, please. Um, I'm trying to think what the one mana slivers are that I need to worry about. I'm not sure. Surely there's no one mana sliver that saves their guy here. Nope, they're going to make us uh, think about it. Okay. So we've got another removal spell in hand. Although we might not get to remove any more creatures now. Another Aether Vial. That means they're probably using their Wasteland now. Yeah, okay. We draw a land here. We can draw a land. Let's get a Soul's Attendant. Let's mix it up a bit. Let's diversify our portfolio a little bit here. And make our Guide of Souls larger. And we can hold up this Path to Exile. Coming in for the big beats. What have you got? Is it the Crystalline? It is the Crystalline. We've got a lot of life in the bank. We've got an enormous creature. We can't give it flying unless we deal ourselves damage. But we have adjusted the list so we can deal ourselves a little bit of damage here and there. Alright, we tied up the match. Soul Sisters versus Slivers. Sure, why not? Um, yep, submit again. Just try and kill the stuff. We don't have access to like a big sweeper, so the crystalline guy can just be lights out for us if if our opponent gets off to a good start. So we need to keep that in mind. I think in game one, we can't really play around them having it because we can then fire off our solitude, and all that's going to do is make them bounce it. Uh, well, I guess we kill we kill the muscle sliver at the cost of two cards, and we're still probably going to get run over anyway. Maybe we're supposed to wait for them to activate the vial, but then they've got the Hibernation Sliver anyway. Bit awkward. Alright, we've got some removal spells. We don't have one of our payoffs. Are we supposed to keep a hand that doesn't have a payoff on the back of having some removal spells? Or are we supposed to draw into our payoff? Because like this sort of stuff, we've got loads of. We've got loads of removal. I think we need to mulligan into a payoff here. Alright, we've mulliganed into a payoff. Sure. What are we going to get rid of here? Probably a Skyclave. It's the more expensive card, and this matchup is going to come down to things happening quickly. We're going to see a vial. We're going to see a vial. Sure. Can we draw a useful card? We cannot. Would have loved to have found a life gain guy. But he's not going to be able to string together our A and our Bs necessarily here. We have more interaction than our opponent does. But all of their cards kind of do the same thing and just make their board better. Wasteland might actually be relevant. Which is never where I want to be. A Soul's Attendant. Uh, I want this Razor Grass Field, I think. Let's get the Soul's Attendant down. Holding up the planes. This way, if they waste sand us, we can still cast this plow. If their plan is to get a Crystalline Sliver down before anything else, that's going to be a pretty solid plan. I would like to make it to my next turn without anything too scary happening. Gale Rider Sliver. So if we hit this, and our opponent has the Crystalline Sliver, that's bad for us. Obviously. i name Cleric here. That's the majority of our creature types here. Am I in the market for killing this Gale Rider Sliver? I think I am. We don't want to lose our ability to chump block. We don't want to just have more bodies since our whole deck is about having lots of bodies. You're going to have the Crystalline guy? They do. All right. Okay, so now the plan is make a giant body that they can't attack through without losing guys and hope they don't have the Hibernation guy to attack and then bounce that guy. All right, I just passed it over. Can I have another friend? If our opponent wants to put in a creature, they probably want to do it now so that we get less triggers for our voice of the blessed a muscle sliver so we have a 5-5 that's going to be difficult for our opponent to block into any creature that now comes into play will give us the fourth counter which gives us the flying and vigilance which is the big one and you know maybe we get indestructible later on but that's that's a problem for later i imagine this vial stays on two yeah is there a death touch sliver honestly i do not know predatory sliver that's going to give us the big boy Mm, this isn't really what we wanted to draw. I think we have to start bashing away with our 7-7 here. If they have... They can't put a Gale Rider Sliver in with Aether Vial. If there's a 2-mana one that gives flying, I guess I don't know about that one. I could Google the Slivers, but, you know, this is just a casual league. I'm not going to do that. I'll play this one out, because if we draw a land next turn, we get to Hardcast the Solitude. Again, another Sliver that's going to gain us some life and make our guy even bigger. Getting close to being indestructible. They've gone up to three on the Aether Vial, which is interesting. I don't know, like I said, I don't know what slivers are at what number. 
Opponent's going for a big wide attack at some point. A Witch Enchanter. So I could play out the Witch Enchanter and blow up the Vial, gain two activations, make this guy larger. That will put this guy up to 11, 12, 13, which isn't lethal. I could Solitude my own guy and go for the win right now. What comes out of Ether Vial at three? All right, I might just Google what slivers are at three. There are so many slivers at three. Okay, uh, let's play this. Play three life. Uh, go to attacks. All right, they have the force of will. So we don't get to kill them right now. What do they have? Unsettled Mariner. So we can block three of their guys and take 10, but we're on 26. This is where I get blown out by a sliver I've never seen before. I did a little goo when it was like a whole page and stuff. I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that. All right, we got the win. Oh, yeah, our opponent really got us with the old rope dope in game one with the uh, the crystallized sliver. That was pretty sick. But I don't think we have an option there when they're putting the hibernation sliver on the stack. Maybe we're supposed to fire off the solitude as well, just in case they have that one. That's probably correct. I think we aren't winning from that position if they have it, but maybe it's still correct to do that. All right, we're one on one. Let's go to round three. All right, this is what we're talking about. We got two life gains, two payoffs. We don't have any removal, but like I said, our deck has got a lot of removal. Sometimes you've got to believe in the heart of the cards. A basic island. That doesn't really tell us the most about what our opponent's doing. Mm, I think we just play out this planes so we don't get stifled. Let's get the old Soul Warren. It's a classic. And there it is. A Thundering Falls. Left a card on top. Our opponent could be like a show and tell combo style deck, which will just beat us and we won't really have much to say about that. Are we supposed to... I don't think we're supposed to play out our thing when they have a days available. I think the play here is basic planes, souls attendant, get more of this going, and then we can play around a days and just jam our one of our big scary creatures next turn and see if we can get the work done. We also have this castle Ardenvale, which we can just use to pump out tokens at some point. All right. Ancient Tomb, Lotus Power. We're going to see a sneak attack and then they're going to put in an Emrakul and they're going to lose, we're going to lose our board and then we're going to go to the sideboard. This is the sort of matchup that could be a little bit tricky. Okay. We're not immediately dead necessarily. All right, Traxa. What are you going to find? There is an Emrakul for next turn. How are we beating that? We can gain enough life so it doesn't kill us. Okay, they chose Sneak Attack, Emrakul, One Ring, Ponder, Days and Mountain. Sneak attack, Emrakul, One Ring, Ponder, Days. Sure. So we take seven here. I would love to find a Solitude. That'd be pretty strong here. It has to go to discard. It discarded the One Ring. That doesn't mean they don't have more. A Skyclave Apparition. So if we play this Skyclave Apparition out, our opponent has to play the Sneak Attack. Or they could Daze here. We can't make enough permanence to care about what's happening here. If I probably use the days now rather than when we're trying to rebuild, then that's not the end of the world. We're going to see the days. So the plan for us is to hope that we can delay our opponent a little bit, maybe. And then they don't have additional things to put uh, through the sneak attack. And maybe we get to win before the sneak attack kills us. All right, so there's the days we knew about. We can't pay. We're not dead to Emrakul, or that will turn off our fetches. Actually, no, it won't turn off our fetches because we'll gain two life from the Emrakul entering. All right, they played a Volcanic instead. They're going to put a different creature through? No. Okay, so we might not be dead. And a Ponder. Now, it's certainly not going to be easy for us to win here. They chose not to use Ponder's ability to shuffle. That does not bode well for us. I guess they're shuffling here, actually, so that was probably not the great greatest Ponder if they wanted to keep it. But they might have just had the one card they wanted off of it. Right, let's go to two life. Yeah, so this is a combo deck that's probably going to give us some trouble. I've probably got a whole grip full of cards over there, so I don't think it's going to be particularly difficult for them to finish us off. But I've certainly played against a sneak attack that deck that's gone through half its deck and not managed to find another creature to finish you off after doing the big Emrakul sweep. It does happen. Island. Island into Brainstorm. Okay, so they don't have it. Three looks is a lot of looks, though. But if this is three looks and doesn't find it, they're going to be Brainstorm locked. And that gives us turns to make our guys. A Lotus Petal. Okay. That's not a sneak attack activation. A Ponder. Okay, so this is almost certainly going to shuffle that Brainstorm. They shuffled. 
Was the random card a creature? Looks like it was. There it is. Squiddles McDiddles. Let's go to the sideboard. So as you can probably imagine, we don't have a lot for this. Uh, Celestial Purge would be significantly better than Devout Lightcaster here. That's just how it is. Uh, so like we can have... We've seen Omniscience, which suggests that we might want some Deafening Silence so they can't just Omniscience combo us. That is something that I'm interested in, potentially. Source to Plowshares can kill the Atraxa, can kill the Grizzlebrand, can't touch the Emrakul. Hitting a Grizzlebrand with this, not great. Uh, I think we can get rid of the Razorgrass Ambush. That gives us one of these. I think the gaining lots of life thing is fine, but it's not the be-all and end-all here. I think we can trim a couple of those for two Deafening Silences. I don't know if we want three, uh, more than three of them in this matchup, though. It's not like it's Storm. This is just a little bit of insurance, and we don't want to just gut our engine when we need to pressure our opponent's life total. We need to keep our creatures in to make the channelers and stuff work. This, I suspect, is a very, very challenging matchup. Okay. I'm going to play this Guide of Souls first. If our opponent turn one's us, then so be it. I want to get something down on the board, though. Like, the Deathwing Silence isn't going to help against that many things. And if we take a turn off of doing that, maybe that buys our opponent another draw step down the line and we lose the game that way. If our opponent has a show and tell for an Omniscience, uh, then we get nothing. I guess we can put the... the I guess we put the, the Deathwing Silence in, I suppose, if they do that. And that's okay. We've got an answer for an Emrakul if they sneak attack that in. We did not hit the second land. Though. That is a little bit more awkward for us. We are pretty light on the old mana base here. Show and tell. If this is Omniscience, we need to put in the Deafening Silence here. It's an Atraxa. I think we want to kill the Atraxa while we can. I think that means Skycar Apparition gets pitched. They can't counter spell this because of our Deafening Silence, so we will get this Atraxa. Big stack of stuff happening. Let's see what they find with the Atraxa. There's a lot of cards to rebuild with. Uh, Brotherhood's End, pretty good here. Kill all our little guys. Sneak attack, not the worst. They can't sneak attack and activate, at least. That gives us a chance. So I'd be very surprised if we didn't see them take the Brotherhood's End, the sneak attack, and the Emrakul here. And presumably a Volcanic Island. Sneak attack, Emrakul, Volcanic Island, a Braid. They didn't take the Brothers' End when they could have, which is interesting. So next turn, they can put in the sneak attack, but they can't activate it unless they have a Simian Spirit Guide. Did not find a land. We did find a card that does stuff. A daze. That's going to set our opponent back further for what they're trying to accomplish. Because they can't play a Lotus Petal and a Sneak Attack in the same turn. So that's taking them a turn away from what they wanted to do. Now, they could just do like an Abraid on one of our guys. Cost them two life. Gets rid of one of our better threats. Because obviously that allows us to get a third energy and then start going big. And we're just not drawing the things that we need to draw here. And that thing is land. I've seen 10 cards. We should have had three lands statistically by now. Or more than three lands. So now they play the sneak attack. And because we're not hitting lands and stuff, we're not having the ability to contest this. Sky Evaporation. That's the sort of thing that might have been able to contest it otherwise. Well, I guess we'll do some more attacking. We're in that spot again where we have to make our opponent not kill us after the Emrakul hits. If they've got two things to put in, then we just lose. But yeah, this match feels... Pretty bad. All right, that's game because we know they've also got the Emrakul. Yeah, I think we also lost this last time we played Solstice. It's just uh, it's a pretty miserable and difficult one to win. It's why um, so Sneak Attack is pretty good into the Eldrazi decks for a similar reason because you know they're playing just like creatures or a little bit of removal and stuff like that, and you just go over the top. All right, let's go to round four. All right, we've got uh, the classic Guide of Souls Ocelot Pride Hand. Let's get Guide of Souls in. A Mountain. A Mox Opal. This is giving me Painter vibes. Correctly identified Painter. So it doesn't really matter which order we play these two in, does it? Actually, that's not true. We want to play this one first so we get more life. That's why I played it first. Good. It's always yield to this. Always yes. Always yield. Okay. So now we can start jumping our friends. If we find a white card, then we can play a Souls Attendant. Unless we find a white card we'd rather play. A Goblin Engineer. What are you going to do with this engineer? Just being a 1 2 is kind of irritating for us. Going to be looking for the painter. If I look for the painter, then we definitely are solitude in this. Okay. We don't need to solitude it now. We can wait till our turn in case we draw something different. Uh, yeah, so we can go 
Mm. Is Witch Enchanter better? I think Witch Enchanter is better in this matchup than the Soul Attendant here. So we will get our Solitude going. Uh, we will grow the Ocelot Pride here so we can get some more life off of this so we can just erode our opponent's chance at having their fair game plan work here. Yeah, we get some more energy. We're not quite at the City's Blessing. A Lotus Petal from our opponent. And there's a Saga. Do you have another Painted Servant over there? No. Do I have a land on top of my library? I do not. All right, let's play this little friend. Chico attacks. Let's make our Soul's Attendant larger here. And do we get City's Blessing now? I think we do. How many? One, two, three, four, five. We do get the City's Blessing, so we get to really pop off now. We have a very lethal attack. Our opponent, if they draw a Painted Servant, can win the game though. All right, they did not draw it. Excellent. So we have got some pretty horrible cyborg cards our opponent to deal with here. So Stony Silence, get right in here. Once again, we are in a situation where Devout Lightcaster being Celestial Purge would have been way better. So the Stony Silence is going to be like the big haymaker that we're adding into our arsenal here. And I think we like this. We're probably just trimming some soul attendants and just running these. And I don't think we like there's an argument for playing the, the path here to have a little bit remo more removal. There's an argument to playing the Purify the Graves to work with Welder shenanigans. But I believe just having the removal we have here is probably good enough alongside this Stony Silence. I guess we could trim a Soul Warden for a path. But again, we're, we're losing too much of our engine and we already have these Witch Enchanters as well. I think we're going to submit. All right. I can deal with this. So we could see a Lightning Bolt on our opponent's first turn, which will obviously change up how we want to play future turns. All right, just nothing there. So our opponent's up to. City of Traitors, Painter's Servant, you say. Okay, so our opponent has Red Blast Banner over there, which is something that we need to keep a little eye on. So if we play out this Castle Arden Veil, vale. so if we drop this Stony Silence. If our opponent goes to Red Blast this, we kill their Painter in response, and then we're in Blowout City. A Mox Opal, sure. And they're playing a mountain, losing their City of Traitors. That gives us less to worry about for next turn. It's going to be harder for them to assemble everything. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. It's a good one. I think we're just trying to get our clock up and running here. I imagine they're going to bin some artifacts. Okay, an Engineer. Sure. And there's a Saga. Yep. It's a pretty strong Magic the Gathering card. But like I said, we're pretty good against fair things our opponent can do. What am I most scared of on this board? I think it is still the Painted Servant here. You can see the Red Blast. There's more where that came from. Opponent. Voice of the Blessed. Don't mind if I do. So we'll yield to these. Save ourselves some time. So we have a 4-3. Our opponent can put both of these under the bus if they so wish. I think we're just going to plow this Painted Servant because that's the thing that I'm worried about in terms of Red Blasts. Another Red Blast. Counter target spell if it's blue. Sure. Um, I think I want to take out this Painter still. So goodbye to the Painter Servant now. They've kind of already got their value from the Red Blast though. So then we can grow our Guide of Souls here. Now what we have here should be able to beat some of the Saga Constructs. Castle Arnhem Vale is very expensive and I don't think should be in this deck. Four mana to activate in our deck is just a bit too much. There's some shenanigans with the Fury that can cause us some issues. Potentially. Although we get to put our ability on top if we get like a Soul Warden. So playing a Soul Warden will protect us from all of the Fury abilities. A Solitude. How useful is a Solitude to us? Not the most. So they can make a 2-2. So they can double block on either of these. Trade a Saga Construct and a Shaman token. That's not great for them is it the flying guy is obviously coming in i think we just send in the flying guy if we draw a white card we get to play a solitude next turn and that's going to help a lot right here comes the construct i don't know what they can find artifact wise it helps maybe some kind of pithing needle not that we have anything particularly good to pithing needle but it's just another permanent to grow the constructs is the most part there could just be a petal could be a grindstone in case they can get out from underneath our stony silence in the future yeah, okay, that's what they've gone for. Right, they're playing a mountain here. It's got triple red available. 
So that could be like Painter plus Blast over the course of two turns. All right, I'm just playing a double striker. Sure. Just attacking with that guy. I'll take that free block. If we can deal ourselves damage, the Essence Channeler will jump. If we can draw a card that does literally nothing, like this Cavern of Souls. We obviously play it out because we might draw a land next turn. All right, we're just going to jab in the air for three. If we draw a land, we probably win the game. If we draw a spell or a white card, we're probably winning the game as well. So I think we're in... All right, they just drew a mount, uh, an ancient tomb, sorry. So that's not really what they wanted. But they can copy the dragon engine or a construct token here. And that's a lot of meat coming our way. All right, so those only attack for four each. So seven and seven is 14, plus eight is 22. So that won't kill us if they attack with everything. If they probe with just a Fraction Dragon Engine, that's fine. We can take this. All right, so we have the planes now. So if we hard cast the Solitude and we take out one of these, they're left with 5-5 five five here. And these both will not trade into the 5-5 five five very well. Uh, how do we give this flying again? Uh, four or more counters on it. So... If we Solitude and then kill our Guide of Souls with our own Solitude, then we'll gain life twice. So this will go into being a four, five, six, and then we're one shy. If we Solitude our Essence Channeler, then we gain life twice, and then we have this and this. Okay, yeah, so we just kill our own guy. Our opponent's got no cards in hand. We know this will work. All right, we win the game. They didn't even see what we're doing, but we're going to hit our Essence Channeler here. We gain the life from this and from the Solitude. This will fly. This already flies. Six, seven, eight, nine damage and we win. All right, that's the match and we're ready for the last round now. We're two and two, uh, not bad. We're losing to the combo decks like I said we would, although we could definitely shore up the dredge matchup, which we'll talk about later. But let's go to the final round and see if we can get a positive on the board with Soul Sisters. Sure, we've got the classic Guide of Souls into double Ocelot Pride. That snowballs out of hand real, real quick. So let's just get that up and running. We'll save this fetch land in case we need to empower our little bat down the line or if we need to go and get surveil land to look for some more action. We might need to think about our opponent's potential stifles, although stifles are kind of an all-time low. Even the stifle not decks are running non-stifles now in the form of uh, consigned to memory. Let's play this Castle Arden Veil. Vale. I would like an Ocelot Pride, please, opponent. How do you feel about that? I would also like to play another Ocelot Pride. So if our opponent in Tomb reanimates, we have a plow to deal with whatever they get. And this way we're just on board. Ooh, let's get some tokens. So we're going to have the City's Blessing next turn if nothing changes. Well, if, if we, you know, play lands and don't lose our creatures. Is this an Entomb? It is an Entomb. We're going to have an Arcan of Cruelties. Probably not great here. It has to be an Attraxor, I think. But we could be an Attraxor. Arcan of Cruelty. Okay. I'm going for reanimate. Sure. We'll lose this, and we'll lose Castle Ardenvale. If we can find a creature, we might be able to get the City's Blessing and just really pop off, because all of our prides will copy, like one pride will copy the other, and we'll just end up with loads and loads of energy and tokens and everything you could possibly dream of. A Witch Enchanter. It's not really what I could, all the things I could possibly dream of. Let's go for a plow here around days. Force is obviously great here for them. There it is. Okay. Yeah, things are going to get awkward from here on out. We get a surveil land to try and find something better. But sometimes your opponent reanimates a giant monster with forcible backup. Oh, they've got a, a fatal push as well, have they? That's uh, delightful. All right, we're going to lose our pussycat. We were so close to having a city's blessing and now we've been whittled away. Goodbye, our cards. A wasteland as well. Just going straight in at the castle Arden Vale. <laughs> we were, like, just about to get a city's blessing and now look at us. Scrabbling in the dirt. Essence Channeler. Sure. We can do some things. We can play this pre-combat so that when our lifelink happens, we gain the triggers on this. You got a daze as well for the full god hand. We're in a... Oh, no. We get to maybe attack here. Into an Orcish Bowmasters, perhaps. Just a fail push. <laughs> sure. Sure, whatever. Uh, this is nine damage. So we're not dead... We could just draw a sword to plowshares and our opponent might not have it one time. Really? Asking us which creature? I think it's pretty obvious. Okay. So we need to draw a plow here to stand any chance in this game. 
Nodra Plow. Let's scoop it up. Yikes. Yeah, the, the blueback frog reanimator deck. Like, the best hands in that deck are so strong that it just feels insurmountable. Okay, so things I'm interested in here are these things of some amount. I do not like the Skyclaves here. They can go and get replaced by a combination of Devout Lightcaster, Path to Exile, and probably a Rest in Peace. And then we have some Purify the Graves, so we can probably trim a couple of Souls Attendants to get two of these in. And then maybe, I guess, check out one Warden for another one. I just don't want to be, like, flooded with these Purifiers. Like, we can beat a lot of their guys. Actually, now I'm going to keep in another Souls Attendant here. We can beat a lot of their guys just by sheer force of removal anyway. Guide of Souls into kind of hot nothing, but we can remove their things. And just creatures in general are good draws for us. Our right, opponent's mulliganed to five already. Four. Wowzers trousers. Let's play a Guide of Souls. The blue-black re decks tend not to run much in the way of acceleration. Like, you rarely see a build that has like a Lotus Petal, so it can maybe do the turn one thing. But for the most part, they're not about that life. Okay, let's play this on Cleric. Let's go for a Souls Attendant. We're going to see an Entomb or a Surveil Lander end step. If it's the Entomb, we want to Purify the Grave now, so that if they daze, they're less, they're less likely to be able to cast something like an Animate Dead. Right, you can Entomb. Get rid of this one now, I think. This plays around Animate Dead and Daze. Alright, we just, we just snapped it up. Love Purify the Grave. It's not the best graveyard hate, but I do enjoy it. It felt better in the Grief era, where they can't Grief out of your hand properly. And Orcish Bowmasters pings for one damage. That's not fair. We still get to see the creatures, so we get the extra life there. Alright, deck. An Ocelot Pride, you say. Get the Pride in. Do I want to attack into what our opponent has here? I don't think I do. Because we could, like, plow one of the guys. But they have so many guys I would rather plow. Like, once Orcish Bowmaster's in play, it's kind of already done its thing. Like, we've got a first strike and a 1-2, so we're not really cared about those bodies. I don't want to burn a source of plashes on that when our opponent could play, like, a Psychic Frog or something like that. Or even, like, a Doughty Voidwalker that threatens to attack on Blockably. All right, a Troll of Khazadun. That's something that we can purify out of the grave if necessary. They've got under City Sewers. They're digging for something. Another Troll of Khazadun. I do not believe our opponent's attacking there. So now we can go and get ourselves the Shabby Backstreet, get that little extra surveil in. Essence Channeler. Yes, please. That's the sort of thing I'm all about right now. So we attack with the Ocelot Pride and grow it. But if they have a... If they have a... a what do you call it? A, a plow... A fatal push. They should have used it already, right? Hmm. We always just stick it on the cat. Just the cat token. Because if they want to spend removal on this, that's just not good for them, is it? It misses us a life gain trigger by not attacking with the Ocelot Pride. They, they can't have a removal spell if they let us do all of this stuff. I don't think we needed to play maximally there. So we know our opponent almost certainly has a piece of reanimation in hand. But then they also have one mystery card that I do not believe is removal. Although they are pausing for a long time here. So maybe it is removal. No. Nope. A reanimate dead on a troll of Khazadun. Is that where I am fighting in terms of our purify the grave? Our opponent doesn't have the mana to do, like, um, Entomb Reanimate with what they've got here. Sure. They had a daze. That's fine. Now, we've got life gain. We've got bigger creatures. There's the other six sewers getting some more surveil action. They left a card on top of their library. Curiouser and curiouser. Castle Arden Vale. We're not going to gain any life this turn. Unless we attack with this, but then they can double block it. Uh, do I care about this cat token? Not particularly. That can come in for more damage. So next turn, if we draw a land, we can cast a Solitude. If we draw a white card, we can cast a Solitude. They're just allowing us to have a better turn next turn. So everything in our deck that we can draw allows us to cast a Solitude, unless I'm forgetting something. Reanimate on a Bowmasters. This will take out our Ocelot Pride. We've got plenty of stuff to win the game with right now. We don't need the Ocelot Pride. Voice of the Blessed. Let's make an uncountable guy that's going to become a massive yacht as time goes by. It's going to grow our channeler. It's going to grow our voice of the blessed. Let's just yield to these to save ourselves some clicks. 
Right. Look, we'll grow the channeler because if the channeler dies, it moves its counters on to something else. All right. Going into the final game of the league. Do we want these Purify the Graves or not? The Bowmasters are kind of irritating. Maybe we're supposed to go a little bit further down on these and grab, grab some Purifies. I don't want that many Purifies, though. Three is fine. We'll have an additional one now. Maybe we're supposed to have all four because we don't really care about their general game plan. Unless it's the reanimate plan. And the deck's kind of like half reanimate, so I suppose it's sort of their general. But, oh, well, they're fair creatures. Ain't no thing. Play planes and pass. Cycling a troll of Kazadoom. Which is not the one I care about. They can reanimate this, it's obviously annoying for us. A psychic frog, you say? Just snap this off right now, just in case there is any random stifle technology or something weird out there. So we can wait to see if our opponent pumps this or not. And then we can path it. Wasteland to the bin, not a surprise. I would like to path to exile your psychic frog, please. It's gone. They get their probably one of the, they've got a basic island and a basic swamp in their deck usually. Right, there's a swamp. A psychic frog, you say. Just get a shadowy backstreet on the go. I don't mind having a guide of souls actually. Go for a Souls Attendant. Let's go for an Ocelot Pride. This is probably good enough to get some action out of our opponent, if they have any. So now we go to the end step, we make another guy. We gain another life. If our opponent wants to jump the frog, they have to discard a card and exile that card. Or we can just put a cat token under the bus. Shields down on Graveyard Hate right now. Animate dead on that guy. We can play the Witch Enchanter and blow up the Animate dead. I played into a daze, but our opponent hasn't shown us daze yet. And I think we've played enough things that our opponent would have been interested in dazing. They did not shuffle off that pond, today. they? Cavern of Souls would be handy here. Did not have the cavern. We knew we had the Guide of Souls coming, actually, didn't we? Play this one out. Let's get the Witch Enchanter. It's basically Ravenous Tupacabra here. All right. We failed on that front. Okay. Am I trying to stop their graveyard stuff? Or do I just want more of the stuff that's really good for us? I think we're going to Solitude here. If our opponent has, like, Intune Reanimate or whatever, then sure. That's going to go badly for us. But we couldn't use the... If they have it, they go for it that turn anyway. And we wouldn't be able to use it after tapping out for the Witch Enchanter. A Bow Masters. Goodbye, Ocelot Pride. They might take our cat out here. No. I was going to say, they might take the cat just to get the attack in with the Psychic Frog. But they can just get the attack in anyway if they want to jump their frog. Yeah, our opponent is now running away with this one. Too many of the, the right pieces at the right time, I think. All right, they're going to reanimate a troll now as well. Yeah, it's all kind of gone out of control now. Witch Enchanter. Ah, it's not really what we want there, is it? Are we supposed to keep this because it can give us some life gain and do some other stuff? Or are we supposed to play this as a land? We can always play it as a land next turn if we draw something like a Solitude anyway. I think we just hold it. We've got some life, so the troll's not killing us in like just a handful of swings. It's got to put some real work in. But the Psychic Frog is going to be jumping, they're going to be gaining extra cards, and once again, Psychic Frog is just going to run away with this game. We can throw all of our creatures underneath the troll just to stop the 6 damage. That doesn't seem like a good play. So we'll just take our 8 damage and go down to 20. Okay. What happens here? Play another guy that doesn't do very much. And then what? They get to draw some more cards with the Psychic Frog. Need our Devout Light caster, really. Not a sentence I expected to say in a game of Legacy, but here we are. I could attack him with a 1-1. One, one. Doesn't seem the most useful. Like, if things go awry, we might need to send multiple things underneath the Troll of Kazadoom bus. But now our opponent just gets to jump the frog every turn, draw an extra card, and we're just buried. It's just such a, a toxic play pattern of the, the frog once it gets snowball in there. And we're just playing some boring little white creatures. There is a ponder. Okay, I guess we play this Witch Enchanter out. It gains us some life, keeps us in the game a little bit. Doesn't blow up anything on this board, sadly. Fail push on one of the Guide of Souls. That will stop us from getting enough energy to jump one of our creatures. All right, I'll start attacking with the 1-1. One, one. The almighty 1-1. One, one. All right, they're just going to trade off an Orc army. Not a surprise. So we need, just need, like, runner runner removal. And maybe we take out more of our 1-drops and just play all the Skyclays as well. Skyclay is like a three mana spell into the Day's Wasteland deck. Can be a bit awkward and it doesn't clean up like the trolls or any of the big guys. Whereas the things we brought in instead do clean up those big things. They, they clean up anything that our opponent plays. And that's kind of the logic of why we brought it that way. 
There's nothing worse than like having a fatal push and getting beaten down by a troll of Kazadoom or something. That's the like the white equivalent. All right, we're just taking the hits here. If we can find another creature, we maybe can put them under the bus of the troll. Our opponent can kill us with the frog or the troll next turn. Yeah, that's it. I'm done with that one. All right, so we only finished with a 2 3 2. I think we got a 3 2 last time. So a bit of a step down. But I think our opponent had some pretty powerful stuff going on in that final round. And if we'd have managed to resolve like a key spell at a key time or whatever, then things would have been all right. And the dredge matchup, like the, the show and tell matchup is just awful. And that's fair enough. But I think the dredge matchup, we just have different cyborg hate, and that's going to help us out in a big way there. So what do we think about this build? Well, both of these creatures were pretty good. Obviously, the Voice of the Blessed is the better of the two, in my opinion. We never got to do the, when our creature dies, we get to move the counters. They kind of just stacked up and beat people down or weren't good enough. That was kind of the place we were at there. I think some of our losses came down to, like, sideboarding stuff. Like, we could have had some Graphicus Cage, which I think would have been a much better shout than some of these Purify the Graves, even though I like the Purify the Graves. I think the the realistic play thing we should be playing is the Graph Digger's Cage, because that also works against the Nardu decks as well, with the Green Sun Zenith and Call of Callings getting shut off. But in terms of our main deck, uh, it felt fine. The Skyclave Apparition felt like it wasn't necessary a lot of the time. We do have like other removal spells, and then we can just have bigger guys, and that's pretty good too. The Ocelot Prides weren't as backbreaking as they were before, but since this sort of Guide of Souls Ocelot Pride combo came out, I say combo, you know, this synergy came out people have gotten more used to playing against it right so it's not just going to be okay there's a load of stuff how do we get through this anymore and lots of people have removal that sweeps up psychic frog which normally is going to hit the ocelot pride as well so what i would like to try next time i play solstice is, is going for a build that has the combo in and if you're unfamiliar with the combo i will have a little explanation of it for you now so it involves this, this card here heliod sun crown so it's a three mana five five uh, but it's only a 5-5 five, five when you have Devotion to White of 5. Uh, it's indestructible. So what this does is whenever you gain life, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. So what you do is you then have two mana to give a creature lifelink until end of turn. So if you have Walking Ballista, you play Walking Ballista, you give it lifelink, you ping, and then it gets a counter. Then you ping and you get a counter and you just have infinite pings and that's kind of what you do with this but Heliod actually doubles up nicely with a lot of the creatures we're playing anyway because if we're gaining a bunch of life it means that we just get to put counters on our guys and we can just make some guys go bigger so we get to dodge some of the removal that may be cleaning up our little guys you know like getting pinged by bowmasters isn't going to happen if we're gaining a load of life and then putting a load of counters on so if we had like souls attendant ocelot pride and this Heliod all of a sudden things are going to be looking pretty wild for us because we're going to be smashing a bunch of counters all over the shop and that's quite a powerful thing to be doing so that's definitely something that i'm going to look for for the next one if we can fit those and some walking ballistas in here we might have to do a little bit of tweaking i think we can happily rule out playing castle ardenvale again this is just too expensive for what it does we've never made a token with it in this league i think we made one with it in the last league it's just not really working out for us and we could just have some more basics and that'll be fine other than that like, this is going to be one of those decks that's kind of polarizing. It's going to have some good matchups. It's going to have some bad matchups. And, you know, we ran into a couple of bad ones today. We ran into a couple of good ones. And I think we're a little bit unfortunate in the blue-black matchup. I think we have the right tools to do that. You know, we have our white removal. We can go wide to stop their sacrifice effects. And we should usually be able to outmatch their sort of fair game plan most of the time due to our high density of removal. But it's not always going to come together. And they do get to sculpt their draws, and we don't have that luxury. So, you know, blue decks are always going to have an edge on that front. But nevertheless, uh, this is quite a fun one, and I'll probably return to some Solstices again in a month or two, just to have another little crack with some combo -y stuff going on. Because I find it quite fun, and I think it's a, an interesting way of playing and just getting some free wins against some of the more aggressive decks sometimes where all your life gain is absolutely detrimental to them. Like we saw against the Slivers, they just couldn't get through what we were doing. And, you know, they had 30-odd powers worth of creatures, and it just wasn't good enough. And that's a cool thing that you can do with this deck. And maybe we'll stick a combo in it, and then that gives us a way of being able to possibly best what our opponent's doing. Uh, if they're like some sort of combo deck, so maybe they show and tell, we put in a Heliod, and then all of a sudden we can then combo them off in response. That's something we maybe want to be trying to look at as an option. But those matchups are always going to be a little bit tricky for us. All right. Thank you so much for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a bit of a blast to play. I do quite enjoy this one more than I should do. All right. 
please remember to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and it does help the channel out. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, I've got a Patreon and all that sort of jazz too. So by all means, take a look at that. All right. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid-tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.